If you're obsessed with productivity optimization, I can relate. I've been obsessed for over 10 years, but I only recently realized that we've been doing it all wrong. Here's why. What's going on guys? For those of you who are new here, my name is Kevin Jabal, physician entrepreneur based in Las Vegas, and I'm obsessed with productivity and systemic optimization. If you've watched my other channel, Med School Insiders, then you may know the peak of my productivity was a few years back when I was doing plastic surgery residency, while concurrently building two businesses and balancing a long distance relationship while also working out in the gym four days per week. It was rough, I didn't sleep much, and every minute of downtime was optimized. Surely this wasn't healthy for obvious reasons, but I thought the issue was one of two things. Either I wasn't productive and optimized enough, or I was working on too much and spreading myself too thin. I was focused on the minutia and trying to optimize and eke out another one or 2% here or there. In reality, the problem was neither. And your relationship to productivity is also likely missing this critical piece. To understand, we need to turn to the productivity arc. The first stage in the productivity arc is gaining an understanding of personal productivity and management systems. You watch countless YouTube videos, read blog posts, and experiment with various apps to see how you can get more done in less time. This is where most of us are and spend most of our energy. You try to maximize the amount of output for any given unit of time. You want to read faster. You want to type faster. You want to study and memorize faster and with fewer errors. You want to be productive by listening to audiobooks and podcasts while you work out or while you commute to and from school or work. If you're super hardcore like me, then you'll even do flashcards while you're waiting in line at the grocery store or sitting at a restaurant waiting for your food. Dropping the kids off at the porcelain pool becomes an opportunity to check your email or do more flashcards. As you dive deeper and deeper into the world of productivity, you eventually reach stage two, the critical threshold. The critical threshold occurs when you realize that no matter how productive you become, there will always only be 24 hours in a day. Maybe you've tried experimenting with sleeping less, but we all know how that goes. Try as you might, you'll never be able to escape the reality that there are only 24 hours in a day. No matter who you are or how much money you have, this will always hold true. For some, this critical threshold is a breaking point where they feel burned out like it was for me. I realized I could either do plastic surgery or entrepreneurship, but it was impossible to do both in the capacity I wanted. There simply wasn't enough time in a day. For others, they throw in the towel, believing that no matter how hard they push themselves, they'll never be able to get past their procrastination or TV addiction. Whatever it is, this is the point where you realize there has to be something you're missing. I mean, how do these super successful entrepreneurs with household names get so much done? So what's the missing ingredient? That brings us to stage three. Stage three is when you realize that geeking out on personal productivity will only take you so far. Those who accomplish the most in life aren't optimizing one or 2% and squeezing out more and more productivity and efficiency from their day. Rather, they're taking a step back and letting leverage do the work for them. Leverage is essentially using a force multiplier, allowing you to 10x, 100x, or even 1000x what you could do alone. Leverage can multiply your output with the same level of input. That means even though you still have the same 24 hours in a day, you're able to accomplish what would normally take you hundreds or even thousands of hours, but still all in a single day, all with leverage. And this is the part of productivity that we tend to overlook. How can we protect our time and use leverage to get more done in the same or even less time? It's most commonly thought of in the financial world as using debt for your investments. But I'm talking about leverage in a much broader application. For example, would you like to live off of $40,000 per year for the rest of your life without having to work? If you had $1 million invested, you could theoretically do this. Leverage can be something as simple as using canned responses in Gmail and templated email responses so you don't have to type the same thing over and over again. Or maybe you wanna crank out five YouTube videos per week. The only way I'm able to publish two or three videos per week on this channel and another two videos per week on Med School Insiders is by leveraging the efforts of other trusted people, namely my amazing animator and editors. If I was still editing all my own videos, there simply wouldn't be enough time. So for Med School Insiders, when we were only taking a handful of clients each month at the very beginning, I was able to take on a good number of them myself. But now that there are hundreds of students that sign up for our services every month, I wouldn't be able to do any of that myself. I need to leverage our close to 200 advisors and tutors to share that responsibility. There are four broad categories of leverage. First, capital, meaning using money to fund work, buy land, etc. Second is media, like video, writing, podcasts, etc. that allow your thoughts to reach thousands or millions with zero cost of replication. Third, tools, like a computer or a car that augment your effort. And fourth, people you hire for various roles, such as delivering groceries or editing your YouTube videos. To get past those 5% improvements in what we can achieve, we need to focus on building systems of leverage. 
This allows you to take on a new project or new task, then set up a system that allows it to be completed, and then remove it from your to-do list while still maintaining that output. There are three steps to follow in implementing this personal leverage in your own productivity systems. You first need to define the task. Get down to the nitty gritty and explain exactly what's going on with your process. Without documenting and writing it all out, it's impossible to find the right tools or set up an effective system or delegate it to the proper people. Take some time here and it will definitely require several revisions to get it just right. And the most common mistake is actually thinking that what you're doing cannot be automated or it can't be delegated. I've had many YouTuber friends who refuse to outsource their editing because they feel it's too central to their final video product. And perhaps they're right, but out of those who have tried, not a single one has regretted that decision. You can usually get the videos to be at least 90% of what you were envisioning with proper communication with your editor, and more often than not, they actually do a better job than you since they usually have a skill set that you don't, at least in my experience. So to standardize editing these YouTube videos, you'd want to specify what fonts, what motion graphics, B-roll, transitions, colors, LUTs, and so on so that you can have a cohesive style. The second step after the task is properly defined and polished up is to automate it. For example, rather than manually posting on Facebook or Twitter about all of my new YouTube videos, I use Zapier to automatically do that for me. Certain simple algorithmic tasks like these are very easy to automate simply with technology. You don't have to be a programmer or a whiz kid either. There are various automations we use with Med School Insiders to handle all the hundreds of tutoring and med school clients that we get every month. Everything from getting the client onboarded with our system to paying our team, our tutors and advisors, has various levels of automation built in. And if we were to manually process and handle each order, it just it wouldn't be sustainable. But this doesn't have to only apply to complex businesses, right? I use simple automations with various things around the house, like time or location-based automation for my home security or lighting or music. The third and final step is to delegate. There are many tasks that a machine just cannot do as effectively as a human. The answer isn't necessarily to do it yourself though. There are far fewer things than you realize that you and only you can do. Most things can be delegated effectively, freeing up time and space in your day and in your mind. As my businesses grow, more and more gets delegated, but you can even start small. You can start with a part-time personal assistant to help you with simple tasks, like maybe scheduling your calendar or sifting through emails. And if you go with remote workers, it's actually way more affordable than you would think. In the early stages of my business, I was completely broke and I did everything by myself, everything from handling emails, to animating videos, to coordinating with customers or our tutors or our advisors. But once I made some profit, I began reinvesting in the business. I hired a full-time editor, hired someone for sales, someone as a customer support representative, and so on. Pushing harder and trying to achieve more through personal productivity alone is gonna rapidly reach a ceiling. To break into the next paradigm where you can 1,000x your personal results, you must turn to leverage. If you enjoyed this video, check out my entrepreneurship playlist or this video here. Much love and I'll see you guys there.